I'm Rip Esselstyn, author of The Engine 2 Diet, the 28-day save-your-life plan that lowers cholesterol and burns away the pounds. For the last 23 years, 11 as a professional triathlete and 12 as a firefighter, I've been fueling myself with plant-based nutrition for maximum performance and peak health. When I joined the Austin Fire Department in 1997, I thought that every shift we'd be making these big old barn burners. But the reality is over 80% of our call volume we're responding to medical calls, where we get to see up close and personal the devastation that's being caused by the fork, the spoon, and the knife, and the manifestation of heart disease, diabetes, the major cancers. Now, if you've seen the movie Forks Over Knives, or if you've read a book about eating plant-based, you now know what I know. What I want to show you is the how, how you can own it and make it yours. Now today we're going to meet with two different families that have decided to toe the line and embrace this lifestyle. And so we're going to go visit with them and show them how they can own this lifestyle and control their health destiny. Come along, it's going to be great. The first family we're going to visit today are Bob and Terry White. Terry's in her late 50s, Bob's in his early 60s. They've been on every diet under the sun. They've lost weight, they've gained weight. They're both on different medications for, for varying reasons, like so many Americans. I'm Terry White, and I'm 59 years old, and I'm a grandmother of seven. And my husband and I had the opportunity to see the movie Forks Over Knives, and we're very impacted by it. I have rheumatoid arthritis, and I'm on all this medication and I would like to eat the plant strong way. I'm Bob White, I'm 63 years old and I live in Los Angeles, California. And in the last 22 years, we've probably been on every diet known to man. We've been on high protein, low carb, often trying to lose weight, but then we would lose weight and gain it back again. So really excited to, to see Rip. Nothing to me can be as exciting as helping people that really want to uh, be free from the shackles of chronic Western disease. And that's exactly where Bob and Terry have landed now in their late 50s and early 60s. Hello. 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 <laughs> Bob White. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. So nice to meet you. Come in, come, come on in. in. Thank you very much. Um, Notice we have your book. <laughs> Very nice. We saw the movie and we went right out and bought this. So you guys have decided to rescue your health with food. What I'd love to know a little bit about each of you is why you decided to, at this point in your lives, uh, make this commitment. The reason I wanted to go and look at this is I have rheumatoid arthritis and I'm trying to get off all medications. I think I'm on about 10 different medications. Okay. We've probably been on every diet known to man. So we, we've been on a yo-yo kind of up and down for the entire time that we've been married. And it seemed like in terms of getting weight off, they all kind of work. Right. But they're a pain to deal with. And when we saw the movie, it just seemed to make sense to us. Well, the exciting thing about uh, eating this way is that you don't have to sacrifice taste. You don't have to sacrifice some of your favorite comfort food dishes. And it's really about substituting a lot of the dishes that you love and just kind of I, what I like to say is plant strongifying them. The only way I was able to get a bunch of Texas male firefighters to do this is because it, it tasted great, it filled them up, yeah. and it made them feel fantastic. We can set you on that path yeah. for sure. And one of the things we want to do is we want to create a, an environment, especially in this sanctuary, this beautiful sanctuary that you have, where it's not about willpower. And uh, I want you to know that you know the average American family only rotates through about six to seven different dinners over, over a month. Mm. Six to seven. There's lots of different options here, and there's lots of other fantastic uh, plant-based recipe books that are out there. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I got it. You're sold. I'm sold. All right. Show me your, your refrigerator, your pantry, and, and let's see what kind of, uh, of foods you have currently that maybe we can, uh, we can get rid of. Sure. Okay. We'll do that. All right, uh, all right, all right, all right. So now just kind of from first gander, I see that you have some milk. I like to refer to milk as liquid flesh. And uh, you basically, you've got saturated fat, you've got cholesterol, and you've got animal protein. Uh, and we're, we're really, you know, the only 
the only mammals that drink another mammal's secretions. We really have no business going there. And we've just become, as a, as a society and as a culture, we've become so habituated to, to milk mm -hmm. and to dairy without even thinking about it any longer. Looks like we have some deli meats here, black forest ham. We have some bacon here. All right, meat, meat, and more meat. And then here we have uh, some ground turkey. Um, you know, whether it's turkey, whether it's chicken, whether it's anything, anything that has, you know, muscle, unfortunately we got the animal fat, animal cholesterol, and animal protein in there. Um, this That's earth balance. Let's put this on top of the, I can't believe it's butter. Okay. We have eggs. Ralph's egg. Yes, we do. Wow. Empty calories there. Soda pop, huh? A little seven up. <laughs> Let's check out the pantry. Balsamic vinegar, not bad. And then we've got the extra virgin olive oil. Do you think that this, there's, there's health promoting properties to this? I just thought it was good for my skin. Good for your skin? What about your heart? For my heart, too. For your heart, too? Yeah. It's not surprising. I mean, most people think that this is a, a healthy product. Uh, the reality is that this um, is 100% fat, it's 15% saturated fat, and it's the most concentrated source of calories on the planet. Well, you've got a big old thing of it. This looks like beautiful whole grain brown rice. Knock yourself out. Vegetable oil, what, what would you use this for? Well, I bought it when I bake. When you bake. This is before I knew about oh, okay. plant based. Okay, okay. Because there are there are substitutes when you bake. Applesauce. Instead of you oil, use we can use applesauce. You can use applesauce, you can use pumpkin puree, you can use bananas. You stop using this and all of a sudden over the course of a day, I mean that's about five hundred calories that are hundred percent fat and anywhere between fifteen to thirty percent of those calories are coming from saturated fat your palate will change and it will change to the point to where you no longer crave the the oil on top of your salads and your baked goods um, you know on your stir fries and eventually it will it will taste that those kinds of foods those kinds of oils added to your foods will taste like synthetic goo sugar grams here there's nine grams and that probably doesn't mean anything to you it wouldn't have to me either until I learned about this but basically one teaspoon is four grams. So, how many grams of sugar are two. per serving? So, yeah, a little two. over, a little over two. two, a little over two. So, just know that, and so that when this your sugars in a cereal say twenty, know that you divide that by four, and that's how many teaspoons you're getting. Okay. Per, uh, and then another interesting thing is like Coke, a Coca-Cola, is forty grams of sugar. Terry. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for showing me your cupboard. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> Are, it's time to start our shopping experience and I think it makes perfect sense for us to start right here in the produce section and this is going to be the heart and soul uh, of eating a plant-based plant-strong diet that you know berries are your friends just loaded with fiber water phytochemicals antioxidants you're gonna hear me say those four things a lot fiber water phytochemicals antioxidants right? Antichemicals? chemicals they're called phytochemicals it's a big it's a big word for plant chemicals and they only exist in plants and they basically they love to zap free radicals and the best way to neutralize or to or to let's just say put a wet rag over these little these little fires that are lurking inside of us is to eat phytochemicals now here's that that kale you were talking about bob you see this oh. Very different. see how it's kind of got a, a different kind of look mm -hmm. and feel yeah. and you can see why it's called dinosaur and then, you know, artichoke, oh, artichokes. artichokes. But I put mayonnaise I on know, them. you used to put mayonnaise on it. Let's also get some of these baby bella. These are like baby portobello mushroom. Mm -hmm. These are good. And don't yeah. they sometimes serve these like a, a burger or something? Yeah, yes. The portobello. Yes, portobello mushrooms make outstanding uh, kind of substitutes for, for hamburgers. Yeah. And then, you know, you put on your caramelized onions, your, your uh, if you want to put more, you know, grilled mushrooms on there. Uh, relish, tomatoes, onions in a bun, it's fantastic. Nuts are fine sparingly. I mean, a small handful of nuts is about 200 calories, okay? And the problem with nuts is that most people, you know, they go and they buy their big containers at Costco and they're downing 
four, five, six handfuls at a time. And that's right around 1,000, 1,200 calories. Look out here. This, to me, all these are the superfoods, all right? Don't think that one food is gonna, like, is the end all be all. It's not. It's the complete totality of your plant-based diet, all right? All these colors, all these textures, all these flavors. Here you can get, like, for example, a sweet brown rice. You can get a wild rice. You can get, this is a blend here of, of a brown California rice and a, a wild rice. I want you to branch out outside of rices too and do other whole grains. For example, you know, uh, look at, here's a, just a bulgur wheat that you can do. Here's wheat berries, here's rye berries, here's spelt. Here's a, uh, a hard red winter wheat. I wanna show you, this is our nutritional yeast. And this is going to be a nice substitute for, for cheese. This is also going to give your salad, homemade salad dressings a nice body. This also, if you're going to pop your own popcorn, you can put this on top instead of, you know, butter. Oh. Um, so should we get some? Can we get some of this? Yeah. Sure, absolutely. By law, there's a little loop loophole. That if you, you shrink the serving size down low enough <clears throat> to where there's less than half a gram of fat per serving, you can say it's fat free and that there's zero, zero calories. So. How do you think that they could do it with a spray? How do you think they can get away with calling, with basically saying that each spray, right. And how long do you think that spray is gonna be for? About one tenth of a meal. <laughs> one tenth of a, yeah, that's right. So let's take a look. Okay, serving size, about one third of a second. That's <laughs> point three. I go right? like this. And then, <laughs> who doesn't? We, we, we all go yeah. And then look at this. Servings per container. 428. 428. So that little guy right there, 428 serving. And that's if you're doing it a third of a second. The way you can tell if something is a whole grain or not, it has to say whole. Whole, whole wheat. If it just said wheat pasta, that's not necessarily an indication. And then if you want to like double that up, you can go to the ingredients, organic whole wheat semolina. If it just says semolina or wheat semolina, okay? You know that the first two or three times you go shopping, it's gonna be a chore, it's gonna be an experience. But after a while, you're gonna know which products you're gonna be buying, go right to and you go right to them, it's gonna become a lot easier. So don't, I don't want you to get discouraged or frustrated right now. Because no, this is just part of the game, right? Mm -hmm. I just love being in here, so it doesn't bother me. I'll, I'll read okay. all the things. Uh, okay. You know, I find that certain fruits and vegetables are fine frozen, and they, I don't, you don't give up much in the way of taste or uh, texture and stuff like that. One of them, I love these 365 broccoli florets, okay? Well, it's better than I thought. I always thought that olive oil was great for you and finding out that fats are not the right thing. So um, I think this has been an incredible experience. We've got a full seminar, full seminar. We, we know what to eat, what not to eat every label in the store. Whenever you're on some kind of a diet that you're afraid you're not gonna get enough to eat, and it sounds like we can eat all we want, we're just gonna be eating the right things. So Terry's getting armed with how to do this and we'll see how it goes. But I think in terms of a lifestyle, to be able to just be able to eat what you want in it for the long run. Now we're ready for lunch, and we're gonna have the quintessential American lunch, hamburger, and fries. I want you to know that it's always better to make your own, whether it's a portobello mushroom, whether it's a black bean, you know, rice burger, or whether it's a uh, black bean oatmeal burger. I've got three recipes in the book. That's always the best, but it's always nice sometimes to take the easy way out and get a, have a nice veggie patty. We are gonna just throw some onions in here, okay? And what we wanna do when we caramelize onions, we wanna get this, this pan as hot as can be. Yes. All right. We're using new potatoes for our fries. And cut it in half. Yeah, stir those guys. Touch of this low sodium vegetable broth here. And this will help the seasoning stick to the potatoes. So we're gonna throw this on here. And then we're gonna throw this in the oven for about 30 minutes. All right, good. Thank you. Go out to caramelize. 
That looks good by itself. So let's check out our French fries. Our new potato. Look at Whoa. that. Mm, those, look, those look delicious. They look absolutely perfect. And you see what happens is you know they're done when they kind of pop up and they're perfectly brown. Mm. And these are still a little bit hot, but you can see how they're nice and moist inside. And these go great with, obviously, with a hamburger, a great side, take leftovers, have them for a snack the next day. You could uh, even have them for breakfast. You, these would be great for breakfast. You could actually chop these up, uh, make them smaller, and have them like little, you know, hash brown potatoes. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's a little pop. <laughs> Our dinner tonight is going to be the sweet potato lasagna. It's one of, uh, one of the Engine 2 kind of signature dishes. And uh, this is a labor of love. But we have three, three hands here, actually six hands, and many hands make for light, light work. work. If you could give me just a, uh, a dab of that garlic in there. A little dab will do you. A little dab will do us fine. Okay, throw that in there on top. That's fine. And have you noticed that we, we don't have any oil in there, no. right? And that's the wonderful thing about <clears throat> onions, mushrooms. You can start any dish with those, and you don't need any oil because they have their own juices. All right. One of the things that's sorely lacking in animal products is fiber. There's no fiber. And this dish we're making here, you know, I haven't counted up, but it's probably got somewhere in the neighborhood of, in the hundreds of grams of fiber. And one of the things about eating a plant-based diet, if you're eating the standard American diet, you're lucky if you're getting five to 10 grams of fiber on a daily basis. And that's why most Americans are constipated. You know, they're not going to the bathroom regularly. You start eating a plant-based diet, and now you are incredibly regular. You're always light, you're unencumbered, and you always have a little kick in your step. Yes, yes. And that's because you're getting, instead of getting five to 10 grams of fiber, you're now getting 50, 60, 70 grams a day. Pretty spectacular. That sounds good. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend this tofu with our vegetables, and it will almost have like a ricotta cheese type mm -hmm. sensation and feel to it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our herbs and our spices. I'm gonna throw this in here. Yes, assistant there. All right, so this is our, our blend of vegetables and tofu. And this is gonna be our filling. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna throw this in there. All right, like so. And this, and the, and the thing is, don't feel like you, you're limited to just these vegetables. You can use any vegetables you want mm -hmm. that you like in here and get creative. And remember, you know, any, any chef or any, per, any cook, actually, you have permission to take any recipe you want and then just play with it. Okay. Make it your own. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to add some more tomatoes. Our final, finer, final layer of sweet potatoes here. Beautiful colors, too. Yeah, this is really <laughs> vibrant. It's going to be it for our noodles. Now let's go one more. All right, now we're going to take these guys here. And if you guys wouldn't mind, what we're going to do is we're just going to layer these like pepperonis. Okay, now here we have our ground cashews. Mm -hmm. All right, yep. now what we're going to do is just, we're going to do it. This is almost like a Parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. right, type substitute. And we're going to do this all over the top. And then when this bakes at 400 for let's say 50 minutes to an hour, and then for the last 10, 15 minutes, we're gonna turn it up and we're gonna really brown these cashews. Hmm. Let me ask you a question. When you normally, or when you used to have a salad, what kind of lettuce would you use and what kind of a dressing would you use? Uh, butter, lettuce, Boston lettuce. Uh -huh. And then um, what kind of dressing? Uh -huh. Balsamic with olive oil. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, today we're actually just gonna use an avocado. That's gonna be our dressing. And we're gonna use your favorite, we're gonna use kale. 
we're gonna have a kale salad, but we're gonna drive. But the thing about kale is, we're gonna use a dinosaur kale. This, unlike green kale or red kale, this doesn't have to be tamed quite as much. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice this up and then we're gonna drive an avocado in here with lemon juice and just a little bit of salt that we're gonna to add to it. But look at it now. See how much smaller it is? Mm. It's still intense. Are you gonna to get to the point to where you're craving that that green, that leafy green flavor? No, oh, that works. I want you to call me from work and say I'm craving that kale <laughs> <salad."> <laughs>
and then pizza for dinner. So that's pretty simple. Yeah. Pretty simple, and it can be incredibly tasty. Perfect. All right. Good. So, why don't you show me the uh, the refrigerator and the cupboards? Okay. All right. Let's see what we're we have to work with here. Okay. Coming down here, we have the the Earth Balance, and a lot of people think this is a better choice than butter. The reality is, this is still a hundred percent fat, wow. and uh, we really, we really just have to get out of the mindset. Well, it sounds of, good. Of, Earth <laughs> balance. Uh, oh, it sure does. That's uh, the marketing, right? But, but you know, if you look at the label, right. and we'll be reading some labels in the store today. You're going to realize that that is, uh, it's a lot of hype, and, and that's about it. Here we oh, do yeah. have some. <laughs> looks like sour cream. Right. All right. So that obviously is, is dairy. Good. We have the tofuti. That's a milk-free sour cream. Again, you know, like the Earth Balance, you know, this has the illusion of being a little bit healthier, but the reality is this is, uh, this is still loaded with all kinds of fat. This looks like maybe this is something for the Doberman. Maybe a little <laughs> snack. And, and the boys. And the boys. boys. <laughs> what a lot of people don't know is that turkey and chicken have just as much cholesterol as red meat, 70 milligrams per three ounces. Um, and so, for example, somebody like yourself right. that's trying to bring their cholesterol down, you want to avoid all meat because all meat has varying amounts, almost similar amounts, of cholesterol, animal protein, which also raises cholesterol, and saturated fat, which also raises cholesterol. So having turkey, chicken, white meat, et cetera. It's, it's really no, more, no better okay. than the red meat. It's got a little bit less fat, but even your leanest piece of Chicken breast yeah. is still 30% fat and 30% saturated fat. Oh, wow. I yeah. had no idea. Yeah. I never read. I never <laughs> looked. But the good thing is, you know, you're, you're young now and right. you can gain control. And then, of course, you know, you, you got the, the Askemeyer hot dogs. <laughs> Looks like you were trying to hide those in there. Oh, uh, that's the wieners. Not mine. <laughs> These are made with turkey, chicken, and pork. I know. And, uh, we had a barbecue and. Uh, you know, just so you guys can see here, yeah. okay. right? So. We look at the calories per serving. Right. So each one of these dogs is 130 calories. And then the calories from fat are 110. Oh, that's, wow. That's so bad. that's almost 100% fat. Yeah. Right. It's like 90% fat, All right? So that right there, I mean, you know. It's a fat stick. It's, exactly. <laughs> Love it. You know, this is a new, a new thing. It's the diet cheese. Yeah. And a lot of people think this is, this is a, you know, a healthy type of cheese, but I want you to see the calories <coughs> per serving are 90, mm -hmm. and the calories from fat are 54. Wow. So this, you know, if you read the ingredients here, you'll see that the second ingredient is expeller, expeller pressed canola oil yeah. and or expeller pressed safflower oil. And then we have coconut oil. So the second and third ingredients are oil, oil. and oil. Yeah. And that is why all of a sudden it pushes the fat content up to 50%. So again, you're trying to bring down cholesterol, you're trying to lose weight, this isn't the ticket. Okay. Right. All right. Okay. And so we just want to we want to give you the knowledge, and then we also want to give yeah. you some some substitutions. Yeah. That's what's the, yeah, the substitution. Yeah. Right. And then you've got a <laughs> vegan chorizo Should sausage, yeah. and again, the calories 120, right. fat calories 80. 80. So you know. See, I, I stopped when I saw the set vegan. Yeah. I stopped at that point. I was like, great. Right. Of course. Yeah, right. no, yeah. And it says no cholesterol, no preservatives. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah we, we, one of the things, you can't ever believe anything on the front of any box or can. Okay. okay. Ever. What you have to do is you have to take matter into your own hands and you have to flip it over and you have to look at the nutritional facts panel and then you follow that up by reading the ingredients. Okay. All right. And so water, textured soy protein. What's three? Expired oil. Oil. canola oil. oil. Uh, but because it's the third ingredient, and they, they, they put ingredients in order of the amount that's okay. in the product. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. If yeah. it's number one, if it's oil, it's not this year. If it's one, two, or three, you know, right. okay. then it's fat. No bueno. <laughs> this is a braided, a braided string cheese yeah. with olive oil, garlic, and herbs all blended in there. What most people don't know is the, the greatest source of saturated fat in the American diet comes from cheese. Cheese, yeah. Cheese whether it's on your sandwiches, whether it's on your pizza, whether you're putting on your crackers. You know, we have become a cheesed out country. All right, we're moving into the cupboard. We've got, we've got a lot of work to do here. Okay. And we're gonna have to go shopping. Okay. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna be here till midnight tonight. <laughs> all right. And, uh, but you know, my eyes, the, the first thing they go on is all these sugary 
these sugary cereals here. If I could just right. pass that to you, you can throw that on there. Uh, let's see. We also have. I didn't even know that this existed anymore. Spam. I guess this is earthquake food. I don't know how long. Or doorstop. We got the uh, the queso <laughs> for chips. Yeah. That's her. The, the firefighters back in Austin would love you. Any good cupboard has to have Jiffy, right? Is that yes. good or bad? No, no. You know, <laughs> look, look at, look at. Well, I'm not saying that, but let's see. We don't want peanut butter that's got sugar and that also has partially hydrogenated vegetable oils. Okay. Which are basically saturated fat. Okay. So let's have a peanut butter that's just got roasted peanuts. Okay. Perfect. All right. <laughs> you know, you guys have got the Crisco's out the wazoo mm -hmm. in here. All kinds of chips, fried chips. What we're pulling out here is basically heart attack food, cancer food, right? You know, diabetic food. All right, you guys, let's get this bucket brigade going here. <laughs> We are going to save this household. Oh, my goodness. All right. You know, you're not alone. I mean, most Americans have covers that look just like this as well. Okay. And that's because we are addicted to the fat and the sugar and the, uh, and the sodium. Okay. Why so many Americans are on medications for high blood pressure is because most Americans are consuming between four to 6,000 milligrams of sodium a day. When you're eating, when you're eating packaged and canned goods, it's just the, the nature of the beast there. Okay. Yeah, I think it's fair to say we could pretty much light this on fire <laughs> and then we can just start right over. But that's, I mean, it's exciting. Right. I mean, this Definitely. is, this is going to be a rebirth of your palates, of your stomachs, and, uh, and of you learning how to cook just this new way. So let's load up the car, go to Whole Foods, and, uh, and shop, get this thing going, get this party started. Let's go. Uh, so, as you can tell, here we are in the vast produce department, and this is, this is where we're going to be get, buying a lot of our food. Uh, but also keep in mind that you, know, you can buy frozen fruits and vegetables, and you're not going to be losing anything when it comes to nutrients. For your hummus, yes. you know, I would recommend this no salt added, and that way you can just dump those cans right into your Cuisinart or whatever you have, okay. right, with the liquid and all. Okay. You don't have to drain it if you don't want. Okay. And, you know, know that all these things are loaded with protein. Yes. Right, and, and as a vegetarian, maybe you, you know. Yes. You don't need to worry about the protein. Butter beans, fantastic on salads. Really? Yeah. I've yeah. never so had those, a butter bean. <laughs> butter beans, they're great, they're meaty, they're substantial, you know, they're, they're loaded with protein. These obviously, no added salt. Um, remember, we want to keep that sodium in a one-to-one -one ratio or less than calories. So 35 is well under 100. Wow. That's a winner, right? Yeah. And, the, and remember, the key is you guys need to become label reading ninjas. Okay. Look at calories. How much fat? <gasps> awesome. And look Good. at the sodium. Bingo. Yeah. Right? And then, you know, uh, we can also go to the ingredients. So it's whole grain, rye flour, right. rye flour, and then a little so, bit of salt. And we need That's to look it. for the whole word, right? Right. Okay. Right. Melissa and Harris, let's let's start with breakfast. Okay. Uh, as you know, the a lot of Americans have either bacon and eggs. Um, do you guys ever have bacon and eggs in your house? Yes. We, we have eggs, not yeah. bacon. <laughs> and why don't you have bacon in the house? It's just a messy process to cook it. <laughs> okay, okay. And, uh, and then a lot of people have some sort of a sugary cereal with cow's milk. Yes. And you told me when you drink milk, you do whole milk, right? Whole milk, yes. Right, so whole milk like this, which is 51% fat. Uh, but here, this is from your cupboard that we cleaned out <laughs> earlier, and here we have, what is this? Reese's Peanut Butter Okay, Reese's cereal. Peanut Butter yeah. Cup Cereal, and this is... Lucky Charms. Lucky Charm, and then this is... Tricks. And then, obviously, this is... Fruit, Fruit Loops. Loops. <laughs> so, we're going to make a really... This has been a staple in my diet for the last 24 years. I say I have it Monday through Friday, <clears throat> and it's filled with <clears throat> protein, fiber, um, complex carbohydrates, okay. uh, healthy fats. And I'm going to go through it with you here. So this, and I like having a variety of four different grains that I put in my cereal. So it's like almost like a granola, but it's all healthy ingredients. So I start with some shredded wheat, a shredded wheat, bite-sized shredded wheat. Then I have, give it a little crunch. Okay. Uh, we do a nuggety cereal, kind of like a grape nut. This is a cashew. There's also Ezekiel. There's a lot of brands out there. A little bit of that. And then uh, this is a cereal that I discovered several years ago. It's Drop dead cheap. It's just toasted wheat flakes. Uncle Sam's. Love it. Put a little bit of that on there. And then uh, to top off the cereal, we do oats. And you got to make sure it's old fashioned oats, not the quick oats. So old fashioned, sprinkle a little bit of that on there. 
And remember, the oats, those are your scrub brushes. They're going right. to go through and lower that cholesterol for you. Um, now, we're going to put on some of our omega-3 fatty acids with walnuts. We're also going to do just a little bit of ground flaxseed meal. All right, and it's got to be ground. If it's whole, it's going to go right through you undigested, <laughs> and you're not going to get all the benefits. Okay. Now, we've got a bunch of different fruit here. I like to get a little bit of banana in every bite if possible. So instead of cutting big slices, right. I go down like so lengthwise. Then I will come down at another angle lengthwise. And then, now with each one, you get four. <laughs> four little slices. You're with me? And then you're guaranteed a little banana in every bite. And every bite. Very exciting. As long as you're eating enough food, you're getting enough protein. Yeah. It's not an issue. It's not an issue. It's like you're breathing air right now, right? right. So you're just getting <laughs> And you're pretty confident you're getting enough oxygen. Exactly. Right? Now, if you're eating, same thing. You're getting enough protein. You're getting enough protein. If you're protein deficient, you got bigger problems going on, like you're in the middle of, you know, a desert island somewhere and you're starving to death. I love to have some blueberries. Blueberries are loaded, as you know, with antioxidants. And then for more color and more flavor, some mango. Look at those mangoes. They look good. Mango chunks. You can also do frozen if you don't want to do uh, fresh. And then kiwi. Do you guys ever do kiwi? Yes, sir. Yeah. Do you? Like Not food. in my cereal, no. but. Yeah, this is a fruit. <laughs> well, you know what's funny? And this is no joke. In my pilot study for my book, we had close to 60 people that went through. I had people that had never had a fresh peach, never that, oh. people that had never had a kiwi, a mango. Never had it. Never, never even had it, okay. period. And you'd be amazed. Most, Amer most Americans, they stick to 10 to 12 fruits and vegetables yeah. that they know, right. and they don't go outside that. Yeah. We'll put a couple golden raisins on there, and then love the bananas. Mm. I love the bananas, okay? And there we go. And we're going to top it all off with some plant milk. Okay. All right, we're going to found this in your refrigerator. You just have some pure almond, unsweetened almond milk. Gotcha. And you look at that, 35 calories per glass. Cow's milk, 120 calories. So this is really light. It's very clean. It has no added sugars. Okay. And we're getting all of our added sugars here from our fruit. Make sure you get a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything again. <laughs> Mm. That's that very good. good. That's good. <laughs> I could do this every yeah. morning. And, mm -hmm. and, and you want to make sure that you get up, you have breakfast. It's a break from the fast. Right. Right. right? I mean, you haven't eaten for probably eight to 12 hours. Right. And we want to get that, uh, that metabolism revved up. And we want to do that by, by eating a, a healthy yeah. breakfast. And this will just... stick with you until lunch. Get it with a walnut. Mm. <laughs> yeah. The walnut is good. Yeah. It's all great. All of it's great. Yeah. I could just stand here and keep eating. Well, and oh, like no. I said, <laughs> cereal is so big in our house. Yeah, so right. it's hard because well, most of the cereals big. are full of sugar. So this yeah. is great. Yeah. And then just to pre-do it, like you said, is awesome. Mm -hmm. And each one of these, like that bowl right there is probably 30 to 35 grams of protein, right. 30 to 35 grams of fiber. Um, that is going to kickstart your day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So first, let me show you what the typical American has for, for lunch. And it usually consists of, you know, white bread or white buns or mistakenly something that says it's, you know, 100% whole wheat. But then when you get down and you, and you uh, dig a little bit, you see that it's got high fructose corn syrup. It's got sunflower oil. So the uh, fact that it's brown is not necessarily good. Not necessarily good. We can do better than that. And the kind of bread that we're going to be using which is right over there, is uh, it's 100% whole grain, no added sugars, no added oils. That's true. All right? And then, of course, Americans, we put our, our deli turkey on there, or we put some sort of a hamburger meat. We put our Kraft single uh, cheeses on there. And sometimes we have a salad with iceberg lettuce that's covered in ranch dressing that's 100% fat. And then we follow that up with some Fritos or some chips. And then we swig that down, all that, with some Coca-Cola. And it's a little wonder that, you know, we are, uh, we're bursting with disease in this country. So let's make a healthy sandwich and show you what that can look like. Do you guys have any idea where the term panini originated from? 
Italy? I would think Italy. I think that's a really good guess. But we're going to be making panini sandwiches today. We're going to be making a mushroom, homemade hummus, cilantro, avocado, bell pepper, spinach, and green onion panini. Okay. And uh, this is very exciting. And let's start, let's start with the hummus. And this is a homemade hummus. And the difference between this and a store-bought hummus is this has basically about five ingredients. We have, we have chickpeas, right. we have lemon juice, we have garlic, actually roasted garlic, and we have some chives in here, okay. uh, and then a little bit of water. Okay. So let's layer, let's, this is gonna be our, hummus is gonna be your new go-to condiment. Instead of mayonnaise, mm -hmm. we're gonna do this, and we're gonna actually lather it on there pretty aggressively. Okay. Okay. And that's because with the action of the panini maker, our homemade panini maker, it's going to flow over and actually be almost like cheese, all right? So there's that. Now, if you don't mind my fingers here, we're going to layer in some of these mushrooms that we actually pre preheated in a saucepan with no, no oil. You saw that, right? Right, no oil. We just put it in there. So there's some mushrooms. Did and you now, put any spices in there, salt and pepper? Or anything I, like I, that? I, you know, I didn't. Okay. I didn't. You guys okay with green onions? Definitely. If there's anything that you're not happy about, you let me know and we'll... We'll remove it here. Everything is fine. Okay, so there's some green onions. We're also doing some cilantro. Remember, we're always looking for an excuse to get green Beans. leafies okay. into our uh, into our diet. And I'm doing a lot of cilantro there. That's good. All right. Now, I think before I do the spinach, I'm going to do we're going to do a little bit of avocado. And uh, if you notice in the bowl, I have the seed hiding in there. Yeah. And that is because do you know what the trick is with the seed? It helps it from not turning brown, correct? Exactly right. <laughs> now, like I said, I get ag we're going to get ag aggressive here. Plenty of greens. All right, plenty of greens. And, you know, once you put it under heat, everything, you know, it melts, it collapses. Yeah. And then we're going to, we'll finish it off with a couple red bell peppers. All right. And then just for a little added touch, I'm going to do a little bit of lime zest, all right? Okay. Push these down, and now let's head over to the stove. So, not everybody has their own homemade panini maker, <laughs> and this is actually a little panini pan yeah. that I brought with us today. Okay. And you you don't have to have this, but this way you get the uh, the actual like sear marks yeah. into right. your bread, which looks pretty cool. And you know the key to a good panini is you need a lot of weight and a lot of pressure okay. on the bread. So we're going to use this. And then, let me think, what can we do? James, <laughs> do you have, do you have a, a, a dumbbell with you? I was going to oh. use it, but since, <laughs> thank you. I think this is more important. All right, 007. So now we, we delicately place this 15-pound dumbbell. Woo! Oh. It does smell delicious. What well, does it taste? Like That's, that is the question. All right. So why don't you each take half? Okay. You're not let, us, have any? let us know. Mm. I'll have a bite of yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know what? Screw mayonnaise. This is way better. Yeah. And yeah. ten times healthier. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 None of the fat. None of the cholesterol. Uh, literally, probably a third of the calories. You can use this on any sandwich, basically. You can substitute. It's, hum, this kind of homemade hummus is not going to be your go-to condiment. Okay. We nailed breakfast. We had our paninis. Now it's ready for homemade pizzas. But before we do, uh, I'd love it if you, if you wouldn't mind. You like the barbecue? Absolutely. Let's take these kind of marinated portobello mushrooms okay. and some of these bell pepper halves and poblano halves and take them out to the grill eating plant strong, it doesn't mean, as a man, if you love grilling, you have to give that up at all. Whether it's, you know, the portobellos, the peppers, whether it's the corn, pineapples, you can do shish kebabs and just go to town. And then what we can do is we can add some of these roasted bell peppers and the uh, portobello mushrooms as some of the, uh, the ingredients we can put in our, on our pizzas. If you wouldn't mind, I'd love it if you would introduce your beautiful children to us. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll start from the youngest, yeah. and our youngest is Donia. She's 11. And then we have Michael. He's 12. Marcella is 14, and Alec is 17. 
Do you guys like pizza? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to get a little creative. We're going to step outside your normal boundaries today. We've got some, uh, these are some homemade crusts that we made. Um, and we baked them for six minutes and now we're going to top them and we have a variety of toppings that we're going to put on here. Now the good thing is you can put whatever you like on here. I mean you're going to build your own pizza. Okay? And we're going to start and I'm just going to go through really quickly. We're going to start with a sauce. This is a oil free sauce and it's already spiced and everything. And we got this by reading the labels and it also is very very low in sodium. And you can see I'm not bashful when it comes to the sauce. And when you're not using cheese, sometimes it's nice to go a little heavy on that. These are some jalapeno peppers. Now the Texan in me likes a little heat, and I can't control myself. <laughs> These are onions. I don't know how you feel about onions, but as you get older, I think you'll learn to embrace onions and all their wonderful properties. Now black beans. Um, I'm going to have a little black beans on there. These are, this is corn. I love roasted corn, especially especially on pizza, so I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to pass on these, but these are bell peppers because we have some roasted bell peppers that your father made on the grill right here <laughs> that are going to be dynamite. Uh, here we got some broccoli, and I do love the broccoli, especially when it kind of heats up. I've never uh, had broccoli on pizza. Yeah, and then these are some sun-dried tomatoes. All right, sun-dried tomatoes, put some of those on there. Believe it or not, I'm not a fan of the olives. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do the olives. They're just a little bit over the top for me. I think my palate has become so used to low sodium things. Oh, and then he, this is a poblano pepper that your father grilled. And these are some portobello mushroom. No, not that spicy. Portobello not spicy at all, actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I also am gonna put a little bit of spinach on top and on the sides. And then I'm gonna finish it with. This is some nutritional yeast, all right? And this is going to be basically our cheese substitute. Oh. All what right? is this called again? Nutritional yeast. And um, you can use this in salad dressings, on top of pizzas, on popcorn. When you guys oh, start wow. snacking on mm -hmm. just air pop yeah. popcorn. Yeah. And there we go. So now I want you guys, it's your turn. Let's go through and let's build your own pizza. As you can see here, just for comparison, we have a store-bought frozen DiGiorno's Meat Lover's Pizza right here. And uh, it may look good to you, <laughs> but uh, for me, I look at this now and I see just grease, suet, lard, uh, I see dairy, I see meat, and it's just not attractive at all to me. Cancer, heart disease. <laughs> Type 2 diabetes, yeah, exactly. Alzheimer's, erectile dysfunction. There you go. You want it, it's all yours. Now, if you want a vibrant. I'm really scared. <laughs> <laughs> if you want a vibrant, healthy life, live large, look at this. I mean, this is an uh, a extravaganza with pizza right here. And what I'd like to do, let's all take a little piece here <laughs> and try it. Why don't you guys pass it down if you want to share or whatever? Oh, thank you, Mikey. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Instead of, you know, having dessert, which is you know, like this deluxe jam birthday bash ice cream that we found <laughs> in your ice box, <laughs> or actually it's not freezer, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> <laughs> or this, you know, slow churn, rich and creamy double fudge brownie ice cream, we're going to make our own ice cream. And you can do this out of frozen mangoes, bananas, and, um, and I actually did this on the Dr. Oz show. We did banana ice cream. And let's throw these frozen banana chunks in so there. these are frozen? These are frozen. These have been in the freezer for about two to three hours. Okay. I'm gonna add just a touch of vanilla extract. Okay? okay. That's really good. <laughs> what is it? You like yeah. It? And then you add a little nutmeg on top, right? Mm. A bit of cinnamon. 
You can actually even add walnuts. That's yeah, really walnuts good. Crushed before. walnuts. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's so good. So I got a feeling that the uh, the, wa the Wally household is going to be doing banana ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So. All right. Mm. Thanks for being so patient with that right. blender. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think the biggest surprise is probably how much variety there is out there and how much you can just throw it all together and have a good tasting uh, meal or, or dish. Because um, there is a lot of stuff out there, you just never know how to use it. Right. So, and, and with this, you can use whatever creativity you want, throw it all in a bowl, throw it all on a pizza, throw it in a sandwich and you have great tasting food and it's healthy. Yeah, for me, it was just more so the food that I thought was healthy. Like the, the bread that we had, certain foods that we had in our freezer and fridge, and find out they're really not that good for you, even exactly. though you think it's vegetarian or vegan or something. It's really it's not all plant-based. There's a lot of fats, there's a lot of sugars, there's a lot of salt in there. Processing so foods. It's a realization that we got to read the, <laughs> read the back of the yeah. products better. Yeah, and rethink the uh, storage of our, our, our pantry and our refrigerator. Exactly. Yeah. You've seen the Whites and the Wallies learn how adopting a plant-based diet can be easy, delicious, and fun. Now I'd like to challenge you, America, to join the Plant Strong way of life by taking the Engine 2 28-Day Challenge. Get your friends and family, coworkers and neighbors, and eat a Plant Strong diet for 28 days. You'll see and feel the transformative effects that fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, and some nuts and seeds will have as you lose weight, feel better, and become bulletproof to Western disease. The Engine 2 website is a great place to find meal plans, shopping lists, and practical advice on how to make your 28-day challenge an amazing success. Join me and be part of the Engine 2 rescue team, and together we can save the health of this country.